Hi and welcome back. You're joining me in my garden today because it's a gloriously sunny day and I'll take any excuse to get outside. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about the link between physical health and mental health and giving a basic structure for how we look after and promote our physical health. Now it's really important that we don't ignore our physical health. So often we take lots of time to think about how can we promote healthy coping strategies, what can we be doing in terms of self-care to promote resilience, and we're thinking very much on an emotional health level. But actually we need to take a step back and go back to basics a little bit and think about physical health first and foremost. Now the reason for that is because if you think of us all on this sort of playing field of life and every now and then something difficult comes in the way that might be the normal stresses and strains of everyday life it might be something big like a breakup or a bereavement for example um, and our ability to manage those stresses and strains and those difficult times varies massively and that varies between different people and at different times but one of the things that can affect how we manage how resilient we are how able we are to cope is how good that physical underpinning of our of our health is so we want to be doing three things. We want to ensure we have three solid pillars of our physical health. Um, and those pillars are diet, um, physical activity and exercise, and sleep. And if we focus in on getting that right before anything else, then we're setting ourselves at a really good starting point on a good level playing field so that when stuff comes in that we find difficult to manage, we've got a bit more resilience to cope with it. These are really, really simple things, but actually, they're things that we tend to be quite bad at and the other thing is that it's not just about teaching this it's about doing it and role modeling it too so have a think as we work through each of the three pillars about what are the small changes that you could encourage the uh, the young people or the people in your life to make uh, to their diet to their activity to their sleep but then also think about you know reflect on what are changes that I could make what could I do better here too because we're all kind of Oh, it sounds corny, but we're all on a continuous journey of, of kind of self-improvement and trying to make life easier for ourselves, essentially. This is just giving yourself a bit of a, a head start. So thinking first about diet. So this is not about never eating bad foods or never having things like caffeine or alcohol or cakes or chocolate or whatever it might be. This is about finding balance. This is about ensuring that you are eating enough of a varied diet in order to keep your body healthy and fueled and there are all sorts of complicated relationships that we have with food that might make this very difficult for different people for different reasons and it's never a problem for us to occasionally indulge in the things we enjoy that's part of our self-care too but this is about meaning that most of the time we are eating a generally healthy diet and a healthy diet doesn't mean all clean foods or anything like that it's about getting enough of our basic food groups having a good understanding about food um, and about the things that it does for us is one of the most helpful lessons we can teach our kids I've spoken to my children since they were three or four years old about things like protein being like the Lego the building blocks uh, that we need in order to grow for example and having an understanding of what's on our plate and why uh, can really help with that and just being a bit more self-aware of what we do choose to eat when we choose to eat it and how much of it we choose to eat can be really helpful the next thing uh, the next pillar so I like these three pillars so diet the next pillar is physical activity um, and this is about what finding what works for you uh, we'll all do different levels of physical activity um, but we there's just so much research that shows that um, physical activity is really really beneficial to our mental health and obviously it's good for our physical health too it can help us to maintain a healthy weight but also it can do things like help us to, to get out um, if you do physical activity outdoors just being outside and connecting with nature can be a great thing your physical activity might just be walking to the bus or walking your dog or going for a walk just for pleasure uh, it might be jumping on the trampoline or climbing in my case it might be running or a team sport there's lots and lots of different things you might do um, and there's not a right or wrong answer here again it's about finding what works for you but trying to make sure that every day you're doing even just a small amount of physical activity so have a little think about what are simple things that you could add into your daily routine um, that would mean that you just got that little bit more active great if you can get outside but simple things like deciding to take the stairs instead of the lift or walking an extra bus stop can make a difference too and then thinking with the young people in your life about how you can encourage them to build physical activity into their life as a regular part of, of what they do so that it's not seen as this extraneous thing that has to be found time for but rather 
rather it's one of their priorities and something that they hopefully gain pleasure from too. A really important group here is children who are, or young adults who are approaching exams. Um, often team sports and physical activities and other hobbies too tend to get cut uh, when we're trying to make time for more revision. Um, and I would just urge us to really think carefully about whether that cut is beneficial or actually if that bit of physical activity, that exercise uh, is, is beneficial and will actually help them to uh, be more productive when they are studying to help them have that kind of clear mind. There's a balance to be struck there, of course. Um, then our final pillar, and this is one that so many of us struggle with, is sleep. So this is about actually acknowledging that sleep is really important. So we often push sleep off the agenda because we have so many other things we want to be doing, whether that's that we're working late or we're getting up early to go to the gym even, or whether because we are hooked into watching the latest series on Netflix or we can't turn off our phones because we've got this fear of missing out from social media. Whatever it might be, sleep is something that is becoming more and more and more encroached on. And many, many uh, young people and adults alike are chronically sleep deprived at the moment and it does make it much harder to manage with the ups and downs of daily life. We need different amounts of sleep, different people need different amounts and again this is going to be about finding what works for you but actually thinking carefully about how much sleep you think you actually do need, making sure that you are setting enough time aside for sleep and ensuring that you have a good routine in place to enable you to get good regular sleep is really important. Sleep is one of the things that is the one of the easier things often to try and correct when we're looking to improve our physical well-being. It sounds really hard and if you're in a bad cycle it can feel very difficult to break that but actually we can form new sleep habits really quite quickly as long as we really really kind of dedicate ourselves to that and we really prioritise it. Um, I made a separate video about sleep that I'll link out to. But there we go, so very very simply, so the, the plea today is to think when you're thinking about your mental health, to think also about your physical health. The two are inextricably kind of, they're unentwinably interlinked, like you can't separate them. And if you have poor physical health, it will have ramifications for your mental health. However, if you take steps to have a good diet, to participate in uh, some physical exercise several times a week, and you try to get good and regular sleep, then you put yourself uh, at a, at a benefit and an advantage and so as you come across those stresses and strains of daily life you're just that much more able to manage. I hope this helps. I would love to hear in the comments below small changes that you think you might be able to make in order to improve your diet, your physical activity or your sleep but it's a really really tangible starting point so whether you are watching this for yourself or someone that you work with or care for then really do have a think about what little changes you might be able to make to improve on those things and I, you will see results. <laughs> I feel like you know one of those um, uh, pretend doctors that you get on uh, uh, like TV ads and stuff. I promise that in 30 days you'll get results. I, I can't promise that but um, yeah just do it. It's, it's helpful um, and it's a really great starting point that doesn't require too much complex thought so give it a go. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Please subscribe if you would like to know about my other upcoming videos. Leave a comment with your thoughts, experiences, ideas, what you liked and didn't like. And give it a thumbs up if you liked it because that makes me smile. Okay, take care, bye.